Hi guys, my name is Melissa, and in today's video, we're going to talk about factor nim. And so a factor nim is a game meant for two players to play. And so players take turns writing numbers, and the game begins with the number 60. And so for each turn, a player takes the current number, subtracts one of the factors of the number, and writes the results. And the goal is to force your opponent to write the number zero. So for example, if we started with 60, um, Grog can subtract 15 since 15 is a um, factor of 60. And so if he did 60 minus 15, he's gonna write 45. And now when the second player plays, um, the starting number is going to be 45, and so he can subtract a factor of 45, such as 9. And so that's going to get them to get um, 36. And then the next player, so the next player is going to be Grog. So Grog subtracted Three, since three is a factor of 36. The next player also subtracted three since three is a factor of 33. And then Grog subtracted 15 since 15 is a factor of 30. And then the other player next, next player subtracted one since one is a factor of all numbers including 15. Then Grog subtracted 2 from 14 because 2 is a factor of 14. The next player subtracted 3, a factor of 12. Then Grog subtracted 3 again since 3 is a factor of 9. 3 is a factor of 9. And then the next player also subtracted 3 because it's a factor of 6. And then Grog subtracted 1. The next player, Alex, subtracted 1. And so Grog eventually had to subtract 1, making Grog lose, so Alex won. And so um, variations can include players can choose to begin the game with any number, not just 60, but any number can be chosen to initiate the game. And also the game can begin with two numbers and for each turn, a player chooses to subtract a factor from either number. So for example, if we start with 60 and 45, um, we can subtract, we can, for example, subtract a factor from 45, like 5, from 60. Or a factor, yeah, a factor of 45 would be 9. We can also subtract that from 60, even though 9 is not a factor of 60. And so as in the standard game, the first player who is forced to write the number 0 would lose. And so we'll look at problem 130. And so it says, in a game of factor nim that begins with the number four, is it better to play first or second? Explain your reasoning. So for this conceptual question, instead of me just going and explaining about the concept, I want you guys to kind of go through and play around, guess and check, go through your trial and error processes, and kind of try to figure out whether it's beneficial to start first or second when you play a game of factor nim starting with four. So I'm going to give you guys about two to three minutes to think to think about this concept, and then I'll tell. I'm kind. Of, I'm going to explain the solution and why you should go first or second. But before I do that, I want you guys to think of this think this through and if you guys need more time you can just pause the video when you need to.
So let's, so let's try simulating this um, factor nim game. So if I'm player, so red is gonna be player one and the light blue is gonna be player two. And so let's say that player one started the game. And so we start with four, so I'll write that in black. Then um, player one, you only have two options since the only factors of four is one and two. Well, four is also a factor, but if the first player were to subtract four, then that person would just lose right away because he would write zero. So we're not gonna consider the option of writing four. So player one has the option to subtract one or subtract two. And so let's assume that the player subtracted one then the person would write three. Then um, a factor of three is, since three is a prime number, it's one and three. And if the second player subtracts three, again, it's gonna be zero. So that person would lose automatically. So that person would only have one option and that would be to subtract one. And so that person would write two. And then the only factor of one, of two is one and two. Again, if you subtract two, that's gonna force you to write zero. So the only option you have is to subtract one. And so that's gonna leave you with one. And so eventually, um, since the only factor that one has is one, the second person will be forced to write zero. And so, um, like this, player one won because player two wrote zero first. And so it is beneficial for the player, for the, um, it is beneficial to play first for the factor name that begins with the number four. So first is better. In the beginning, you know, uh, we also mentioned that we have two possibilities for player one. So player one can subtract either one or two. And this was a case where the where we assumed that player one subtracted one at the very beginning. But what would happen if player one decided to subtract two? Well, I'll try to test that out. So we start with four, player two, player one subtracts two, so he writes down two. Then the only factor of two is one and two. Again, if you subtract two, that's gonna force the second player to write zero. So the second player would only subtract one. And that's gonna leave one. And then the only factor of one is one, so player one would lose, right? And so player one would lose. So player one should actually, um, it is better for you to play first, but it's only better for you to play first when you subtract one. So to win, you must play first and you must subtract one at the beginning. Now problem 131 says, 
List all of the possible numbers you can get by subtracting a factor of 45 from 45. How many of these results are odd? And so we can begin by listing factors of 41, including 1, 3, 5, 9, 15, and 45. And so the result of subtracting these factors from 45, so 45 minus 1 is 44, minus 3 is 42, minus 5 is 40, minus 9 is 36, minus 15 is 30, and minus 45 is 0. And so none of the results are odd, and so we're going to write none. In problem 132, is it possible to subtract, to subtract a factor of an odd number to get an odd result? If so, name the odd results, name the odd number and its factor. If not, explain why this is impossible. Now, just like we saw in 131, it was impossible to get an odd result when we begin with an odd number like 45. And so we're going to go over the reason. And so we learned that an odd number has no twos in its prime factorization, right? Um, just the fact that it's odd means that it cannot be divided into two. And so two is not going to be a part of the prime factorization of any odd number. And so no factor of an odd number can have a prime factor of two. And that means that all of the factors of an odd number is odd. And that is why, oh, and so that means that all factors of an odd number is odd. But when we're subtracting a factor from the odd number, that's going to be odd minus odd. And in the previous video where we talked about identifying patterns, we learned that odd minus odd equals an even result. And so that is why it is impossible to get an odd result by subtracting a factor of an odd number. Now we're going to move on to our next problem. So it says, find and describe a strategy that the first player can use to win a game of factor name that begins with 60. So this problem is probably one of the hardest um, word problems we have in this topic because it's really conceptual and you really have to understand the rules of factor name well. But then I will be giving you guys the solution at the end but I really want you guys to try to think this through because um, even though you get the answer wrong and even if you might not be able to think of a strategy, just thinking about like all the possibilities helps you really solidify your understanding of factor name and all the uh, strategies that we have learned so far. So I'll give you guys about five minutes to solve this. If you need more time again, of course, you can pause the video if you um, think you've got the, got the solution and you have leftover time, then you can fast forward the video. But yeah, I'll be giving you guys the solution after five minutes. But for now, I want you guys to try to solve this um, problem on your own f and for about four to five minutes by using various strategies, um, looking back at your notes, looking back at previous videos, looking back, looking back at previous concepts and trying to really figure out a strategy to win.
So this problem is a little tricky. But basically, um, you guys can pause the video and then try to think about how this would work. But to give you guys the solution or the answer to this problem, um, since it's more of like a conceptual problem, it's kind of hard for me to write it out and show it to you because it's more of a concept problem rather than actually like solving. And so to explain the concept, um, player one can guarantee a win if um, player one can guarantee a win starting with the number 60 or any other even number by always subtracting one or other odd factors and writing odd numbers only. And so that is because um, if the player, if the first player only subtracts odd numbers, like one or other odd factors, then that is going to force the second player to subtract even numbers and then using this strategy um, every number that player one writes will be odd because 60 is an even number and so if the player subtracts odd factors it's going to be even minus odd and we learned that even minus odd always gives an odd result so whatever number the player um, one writes is always going to be odd and so player two is going to be forced to subtract even so player two will be um, player two will be forced to write even numbers right and so well, not player two has to write even numbers, not subtract. Player two has to write even numbers. And that is because, so to explain this, um, you guys understand why player one always writes an odd number, right? It's because we start with an even number 60 and always subtract odd factors. And we know that um, by pattern, even minus odd always gives us an odd result. And then if we have an odd number, we learned here that it's impossible. Um, all odd numbers only have odd factors and that's because odd numbers cannot be divided into two because it's not even. And so that means that odd numbers will have odd factors only. And so player two will always follow a pattern where he has to do odd minus odd. And we know that by pattern, odd minus odd is even. So player two is forced Player two is forced to write even numbers only. And then this continues until player two writes two, and then player one writes one. And so player two is only going to be left with the option to do one minus one, which is zero. And so I know that was a little tricky, but I hope you guys understood the concept. And then since this was the only page that we had for today's lesson, um, a factor name, I decided to talk more about um, adding fractions and doing longer sums. 
And so if we have um, this problem, we can notice that, so for a fraction, if we have a over b, we read this as a over b, the b is gonna be called a denominator. And a is gonna be called the numerator, right? And in questions like these, where the denominator is all the same, we can just set the denominator as the number and then add the numerators together. And so that is gonna be 14 over seven, which is two. And so we'll do the same thing for the practice problems. So the denominator is the same. So we're gonna do denominator over, sorry. So we're gonna do numerator over 23. And so it's 11 plus, so in here we had 14 over seven equals two. And so here we have 11 plus 16 plus 12 over 23. And that's gonna be 27 plus 12 over 23, which is 39 over 23. And so we had 39 over 23. And then we can write that as So we know that 23 over 23 is equal to one. And so we wanna write that as 39 over, so to consider that we can try 39 over 23 and try subtracting the one. And so that's gonna give us 16 over 23. And so we can write this as a mixed fraction so we're going to write the 1 to indicate that there was a 1. And then we're going to write the fraction that could not be represented as a whole. So we're going to write it like that. Now let's look at the next problem. Again, the denominator is the same. So we're going to add the numerators. It's going to be 20 over 11. And so if we subtract 1 from there, that's going to give us 9 over 11. So we can write that as 1 and 9 over 11. And then for problem 179, we can do vice versa. So if we have a mixed fraction, this 2 indicates that that was 30 over 15. And so if we add that to 2 over 15, that gives us 32 over 15. And the one here indicates 15 over 15. So that plus 13 over 15 is gonna be 28 over 15. So what we have here is basically 32 over 15 plus 8 over 15 plus 28 over 15. But instead of converting the mixed fraction to, um, uh, to, so instead of converting it to fractions and then um, trying to add that and then converting it back into mixed fractions, So larger, and also just to teach you guys a term, numbers like 20 over 11 is called an improper fraction. And that is because it's greater than one, so the numerator is greater than the denominator. So that means it's greater than one. And uh, when we write fractions like this, it's called a mixed 
fraction. Or a mixed number. It's called a mixed number. And so improper improper fraction mixed number and so when we have mixed numbers we can basically add the whole numbers together so we can write that as three and then add the fractions together so that's going to be two plus eight plus thirteen over fifteen so that's three and twenty three over fifteen so we can write that as 4 and 8 over 15. And then let me just write that again. For problem 180, we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 over 7. And that's going to be 21 over 7, which is 3. And that's 21, and that's 3 because that's basically 7 over 7 plus 7 over 7 plus 7 over 7. So that's equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3. And then it says, write the perimeter of each shape below as a whole or mixed number in simplest form. And so to calculate the perimeter, you know, we add all of the sides together. So we're doing... 5 and 5 over 8 plus 7 and 7 over 8 plus 3 and 3 over 8. So we can add the whole numbers together. So we add 5 and 7 and 3 together. So that's going to give us 15. And then add the fraction together. And that gives us 15 over 8. So that can be written as 16 and 7 over 8 inches. For the rectangle, um, we can think of this as adding 5 and 7 over 10 twice and 2 and 3 over 10 twice. Or we can think of this as adding these two sides together and then multiplying that because it's going to be the same on the other two sides. So I'll do that method. So if we add 5 and 7 over 10 plus 2 and 3 over 10, that's going to be 7 and 10 over 10. So that's going to be 8. And then 8 times 2 is going to be 16 meters. For the pentagon, we're going to add the 5 sides. And so again, add the whole numbers together for now. So that's going to be five, time, 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, which is 25. And then we add the fraction together. So that's going to be 3 plus 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 over 5. And that's going to be... 13 over 5, and so that will be 27 and 3 over 5 inches. Again, if you guys need more time to solve this problem, again, feel free to pause the video and then come back when you need to. Um... Oh, sorry. Also, this was 12, not 13. So we would have to change to 2 over 5. Sorry for the confusion. And so now we have our final question. It's a rectilinear hexagon. So for this, um, this shape is a little tricky, but... What we can think of this is um, 
this side is basically the same as these two added together. This side is basically the same as these two numbers added together, right? Because this portion is going to be the same as this portion. And then this portion is going to be the same as this portion. So basically adding these two numbers together are going to give us the answer for this side. And so we'll start by solving the sides first. So this side is going to be 3 and 2 over 3 plus... 4 and 2 over 3, so that's going to be 7 and 4 over 3, or 8 and 1 over 3 centimeters. And this side is going to be 4 and 1 over 3 plus 3 and 1 over 3, so that can be written as 7 and 2 over 3 centimeters. And now we're going to add all sides together. So add all the whole numbers. 4 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus 7 plus 8. So that's going to give us 29. And then we're going to add the fractions together. So it's going to be 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 over 3. And so that is going to give us 9 over 3, which is 3. So we're basically doing 29 plus 3, which is 32 centimeters. Yeah, and that was it for our video today. Um, and I hope I see you guys in the next video. Thank you.